So I decided to get back into Diablo 4 Season 4. And I hadn't touched this game since Season 1. I tried Season 1, didn't enjoy it, and literally uninstalled the game. While coming back to the game, and I'm about an hour into Season 4, level 10, still leveling. It kind of got me thinking about just games as a whole. You know what I mean? Is my $70 even worth buying a game at launch nowadays? With the current state of gaming and what exactly it is that everything is happening with the closure of studios, the mandatory uh, connect, uh, API connections needed for stuff like Sony and Ubisoft, everyone having their own launcher slash platform. The exclusivity in games, I believe, is finally coming to a close with the announcement of Square Enix taking a more universal approach, Xbox taking a more uh, publishing approach, and just PC games as a whole finally having some love there, right? Generally speaking, I'm kind of just ranting. With all that being said, current state of gaming. This isn't a gaming is bad kind of video. I'm just observing at what has been happening and what literally is going on with our products and games and everything that we love about this hobby, right? Oh, the butcher, the butcher. Uh, just oh, the just just know that. Oh sh, dude, yo, what the, bruh, bruh. This guy is really... Alright, anyway, as I was saying, um, I really do think that there is a lot of good examples when it comes to uh, certain titles and games that have come out in the last, let's say, three years, right? I know live service modeling has been uh, a part of gaming for quite some time now, right? Um, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Uh, how did he get all his health back? <laughs> With everything being so transparent, right? It's, which is exactly where live service modeling comes from, which is exactly why so many big studios are now leaning into what quote unquote the little guys have been doing for quite a while now, right? Baldur's Gate 3 did it. Literally every indie game known to man, Hades 2, Hades 1 etc etc has done it you know what i'm saying like uh with that in mind oh my goodness what's that in mind i can't even get my thought across because i'm being chased at level 10 um with that in mind having a more transparent and honest approach to gaming as a whole right i believe it has benefited us right that to me is one of the really great things that have come out of gaming as a whole, with modern gaming especially. Uh, seeing the level of transparency and the overall uh, acceptance of the fact that, hey, there's a roadmap here, uh, we're working on it, believe me, right? Like, it, it, it's very much a, uh, it's a stance, right? It's a, it's a status update, it's, it's basically the studio being like yo like we don't have everything that we need at the moment but like here's what we have so oh my god here's what we have so far <laughs> and uh i hope you guys enjoy what you have and we're gonna listen to the feedback and i think that again uh when it comes to uh just overall uh is this guy healing himself is he <laughs> understanding of the game development process i believe there's been a little bit of clarity when it comes to what, you know, is happening up behind the scenes and what is happening. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. What is happening uh, when certain publications are not where they need to be in development, right? I think that's great. However, however, with all good ideas, there are also bad good ideas. Oh, excuse me. Really good bad ideas. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like... There are just titles that, well, it's gonna <laughs> require you to, you know, they'll say have the promises of the, hey, this is an early access game, uh, we're working on it, like believe us, like trust me, we're gonna do all this. 
And of course they don't, right? And it just so happens to be a lot of the bigger studios, the AAA game publishers and all the really big blockbuster games that have literally defined what gaming is, is now. And all that to say, all that to say, oh, I'll turn a little bit nice, all that to say, uh, I think where we're headed next, right? We're the current state, I believe, is evolving, right? We're headed towards transparency and honesty and basically telling us as consumers exactly what is happening. That is gonna that is the new normal. Uh Helldivers 2, I think, is a really good example of that. They I believe crack the code when it comes to what a live service should be and how it should be enacted especially because they're not one of the larger studios you know what i mean so when it comes to a certain level of understanding that there is time needed to develop new content it for us as content consumers that's great right but the fucking cat let's i blame it on capitalism it's really just the fact that uh there's no consequences to not delivering a product, right? There's truly no consequence for these big, these big studios and these big publishers who release games in a half-assery state to say, "Hey, like we're actually gonna work on it and we're gonna follow up." Anthem is probably one of the best examples of that. That game had so much potential, but you know, it just it they just stopped supporting it. I'm, I'm kind of just going down a rabbit hole at this point, but you kind of get what I'm saying, right? Like, I think as consumers, we're really just sick and tired of having the, having, basically just being fucked over constantly, right? And here I am playing Diablo 4, literally one of the perpetrators of those very predatory practices, right? And here I am saying, oh, like, Season 4? Alright, let's check out Season 4. It might actually be good. Was my $70 not enough to ensure that I have a good game to play, right? $70 ain't cheap. Let's not forget about taxes. You know what I'm saying? You want to put $70 in perspective? Let me, get, let me give you one. I went to McDonald's to get lunch. I got a McChicken, a coffee, and small fries. It was almost $10. Like, here I am thinking it's fucking 2015 and thought, oh, that was a dollar. I should have gotten the Applebee's 3 for me. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. Uh, but you can kind of get what I'm, what I'm laying down here, right? It's like, what's going to come after all of this? Uh, in my opinion, I think it's going to be a little bit more of the same, uh, which is why indie games and double A games right now are good and are receiving a lot of love right now, right? I believe that indie games, AA games, at the moment, you know, they're pushing the industry forward when it comes to creativity. However, the expectations and at the rate at which us as consumers are going through content is very fast, yo. Like, let's not let's let's not get it twisted. Like, I'm not here saying that like uh, when studios release games, there should be plans, obviously. But I'm also not gonna pretend like the intake of uh, oh, what the heck is this? The intake of gaming itself has has risen right like a lot more people are playing games there's a lot more uh opinions there's a lot more thoughts expectations are higher it is officially not official it's been a big business a lot of money involved people who don't understand games are investing money in this shit you know what i mean it's very different than obviously what we come to understand with gaming and also what it's becoming and again this is kind of just me opening the can of worms like i really would like to know your thoughts on where you guys think gaming is headed next because as somebody who truly loves this hobby somebody who really want, wants to support uh not just indie developers just good good games as a whole right like us as a community as much as i like am reluctant to say it we're toxic as hell but we're in this together right when it comes to all the uh portrayals of certain characters that we may not like to uh, predatory practices when it comes to live service models or you know my favorite uh games not having been not being complete at all and we pay full price for this 
right? How many of you guys think Suicide Kill the Justice League is going to make it past 2025? You know what I mean? Like, do you really think that they have something planned for 2026 onward? Like, they had just reported the fact that they, that they took an L to literally creating this game. And it's like, yeah, that's not good. You know, like, especially for, for uh, a big studio like Warner Brothers. Like, you know what I mean? And that was supposed to be a big... It was supposed to be a big release and it completely bunked and I was somebody who was very excited for uh, that game to come out only because generally speaking DC content outside of their movies is usually pretty good anyway <laughs> that's for a different video again I'm just ranting and rambling here this was literally what I was thinking when I booted and booted up uh, Diablo 4. I was like, wow, like this game is just literally has all the, basically everything we hate about games. Has all of that locked in. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it's like a main stage of Diablo games now. And it's like, like what, what can we expect next, right? With all good ideas come really good, bad ideas. And what's happening with the live service model, I, I'm hoping, right, this is my perspective saying that the glass is half full, that there is going to be an overcorrection, right, of all this content and all these games not coming out in a complete stage, right, where studios were, are just going to abuse the hell out of early access, but at least the game will be out. The early access debate is, is a, I have a different take on that than most folks, but um, when it comes to smaller teams, I think it's beneficial. Again, just yapping. <laughs> oh, where are my guys going? Come back. Uh, I, again, it's just really a thing, something, excuse me, that I've been thinking about because when it comes to everything that has happened in the last... Since COVID, basically, 2020, it has changed business practices as a whole. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are we going to do as a community? Where Where is this headed next? Because unfortunately, we're not the ones making those kind of decisions, which, you know, ultimately is trash because we have to bear to... We have to bend the knee, unfortunately. However, we can... We can <laughs> have... a uh, little bit of an uprising when it comes to supporting certain game studios right i think i think larian studios is a really good example i for one am somebody who has tried to play the bg series like but i just it just wasn't for me but i bought the game and i supported it and i'm still trying to learn it you know what i mean it's one of those very uh it's one of those products that's very dense it's a game that just has a lot going for it and you're not gonna get it in your first shot and that's exactly what I paid for. You know what I mean? It's, 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 I got more than my money's worth. And that kind of over delivery is what is causing this kind of loyalty when it comes to certain games. And like for a lot of us who are used to receiving a certain level of quality, right? I think, I think all AAA games are a very good example. We're used to receiving a certain type of quality from these big games. If they are now putting these smaller studio practices the big games and it's like dude you have the teams you have the capital like why are you guys utilizing the same strategies as smaller teams and if you are you should be over delivered you know what i mean like the expectations have changed a lot and where i think everything is headed towards next is us as consumers as content consumers not just with video games are starting to finally have a little bit of a voice when it comes to uh, the content that we want to engage in. You know what I'm saying? And again, this is just me kind of rat rabble rousing here, but it was just something literally I thought of while I was booting up Diablo 4. I was like, yo, this is... <laughs> I can't believe I'm playing this game right now. <laughs> like, of all the games for me to be playing at the moment, like Diablo 4 was not the one that I thought I was going to be jumping back into. Right? Uh, it, it is a very good time to be revisiting games, and uh, that's just my current take. That's my take on the current state of gaming and where I believe gaming is headed to next. And us as content consumers and customers, hopefully, will see some of those benefits from studios like Arrowhead, Larian, 
right a bunch of indie studios right that i'm, that I'm blanking on at the moment uh but let me know what you guys think because like again i am playing with literally one of the games that has dove into every predatory practice uh known to this known to gaming <laughs> don't even get me started on diablo mortal yo don't even get me started yo uh, anyway uh, thanks again uh this is the dirty need and yeah i'll see you when i see you peace